very good morning students welcome to our first mock test which is going to give you a simulation of upsc preliminary examination i request you all to try this tests as if you are taking the upsc examination taking the test as real as possible making it as real as possible will help in your last minute preparation so with this small note let's get into the discussion so i will be taking up the questions from environment and science and technology so let's get into the work let's start with question number 6 question number 6 the system of scientific naming of living organisms under binomial nomenclature is used for which of the following group of organisms binomial nomenclature is a scientific system of naming living organisms first introduced by the famous scientist called as carolus linnaeus take for example homo sapiens which is the scientific name for humans homo is a reference to genus and the sapiens stands for the species where the human belongs to homo sapiens binomial nomenclature two system naming now this two system naming is applicable for which group of organisms is what the question is about it is applicable for bacteria yes take for example e coli the common bacteria what everybody is aware of escherichia coli escherichia is the name of the genus coli is the name of the species so binomial nomenclature is applicable for bacteria it is also applicable for plants as well mangifera indica is a name for mango or oh, that is also applicable for plants virus no binomial nomenclature is not applicable for virus because virus is commonly named based on its morphology based on its nucleic acid type whether it's a dna virus or a dna rna virus it is also based on it's tra it's a uh, dn it's a replication type whether it uses dna replication or it uses reverse transcription so that is not correct virus is not named using binomial nomenclature so virus where it comes it's to be eliminated but plant is also used so the correct answer is 1 and 2 only let's move to the let's move to the question number 7 now this question is about sub orbital flights if there is a planet and if a launch vehicle is put into the uh, flight it goes around and around and keeps itself in a circular orbit around the planet but to maintain this flight within the orbit there is a minimum velocity required that is 27400 kilometers per hour only when an object is traveling at this at this velocity it can remain in orbit sir what will happen if the velocity is lesser than that imagine like this you throwing a stone you throw a stone powerful enough it may even go into the space continuously going you throw with little less of force it will go into the space and keep rotating around the earth you throw with even lesser force it will go like this and fall somewhere down like this it goes here and falls somewhere down this is called as parabolic path now let me tell you suborbital flight is when like a throwing a stone it goes to certain distance and falls back parabolic path so an object that has a parabolic flight path which never stays in the orbit permanently which the velocity will be lesser than 27400 kilometers per hour now that is called a suborbital flight so suborbital flight now regarding this three statements are asked it does not cross the karman line what is called as karman line you guys would be aware it is average on an about 100 kilometers above mean sea level this is what called as the edge of space 
if you go 100 kilometers above the earth it is considered to be reaching the space so whether these kind of suborbital flights suborbital flights when we say it's like this it's like this we have the earth let's say this is the karman line you throw an object it goes like this and it comes back so suborbital flights need not be in such a way need not be called in such a way that it cannot cross the karman line no wrong it may cross the karman line also that is correct so when we say it does not cross the statement becomes wrong i said earlier it can cross a karman line so where one comes this comes so the statement is wrong then all of the above that is also wrong now the only option is 2 and 3 and none of the above let's look at the second statement passengers on board such a flights will experience microgravity yes they experience microgravity that is the reason why various space agencies uses suborbital flights who are conducting microgravity experiments that is the purpose of suborbital flights it is also used for space tourism that's the second purpose third it is also used to train astronauts to go into the space because astronauts need to be trained for microgravity environment which can be gained only in this uh, suborbital flights so second is correct third it cannot be used to launch satellites no suborbital flights cannot be used to launch satellites because it never it will never stay in the orbit it goes and comes back therefore it cannot be used to launch satellites correct so the correct answer is 213 Question number seven. The correct answer is B two one three. Then question number eleven. Question number eleven. Consider the following statements. Statements in general. fungal infections are rare in humans correct it's a correct statement compared to bacteria or virus fungal infections are very rare what is the reason for that due to the warmer body temperatures humans are known to be uh, warm blood animals warm blooded animals because of this naturally warmer body temperatures it is not very conducive for the fungi to grow well it does not allow the fungi to grow better so due to the warmer body temperatures that does not allow the fungi to grow well yes that is a correct statement and second increase in ambient temperatures due to the global warming they are talking about the global warming related increase in global average temperatures now this makes fungal species to adapt to this warmer conditions and once it adapts to the warmer conditions it will adapt to grow in humans also and once this happens the human fungal infections will become more common as of now it is very rare but due to the climate change fungus may become adapted to cause this infections in humans more commonly correct both the statements are correct both 1 and 2 is answer for this question let's move to the next one question number 12 among the species given below question number 12 among the species given below which are regarded as flying mammals flying mammals now first let's see among the options which are can be called as mammals whether bat is a mammal yes flying squirrel squirrel is also a mammal lemur lemur is um is is a is a type of a monkey species which is most commonly found in madagascar okay so flying squirrel flying lemur is a monkey which is therefore a mammal so all the three are mammals but the next question is are they capable of flight now when we say flight flight can happen by two means reactive flight active flight and gliding flight gliding flight is when the animals glide through the air they don't have an active flight movement 
so gliding is not considered to be a true flying mammals that is only one true flying mammal which is bat flying squirrel hop from one tree to another through a gliding motion because between the foreleg not the hind leg between the foreleg they have a special membranous tissue have you seen batman you know batman glides from the top of the building hitting the enemies below he has this kind of a pattern uh, kind of a muzzle you know kind of let's say this is like this special kind of a wing it's more like a wing have you ever seen paragliders as an adventure sports in movies or in other sports channels the same thing is found in flying squirrel and flying lemur it is by a special muscle called as patago patagium that that special membrane is called as patagium but they are not considered to be true flying mammals and therefore for question number 12 the answer is one only others are not correct question number 13 eight cheetahs from namibia and 12 from south africa were transported to India between September 2022 and February 2023 as part of initiative to introduce reintroduce the species to India so this is a statement relevant to uh, cheetah reintroduction project spearheaded by in fact uh, taken a special interest by our prime minister and under this project the question asks uh, where the cheetah is taken from it is taken from namibia an african country and also and also south africa now when this happened and the cheetah is taken to kuno palpur national park of madhya pradesh from this african countries true african countries it is relocated to kuno palpur national park now will this change has been called as what kind of a change whether it involved a change in habitat yes what is a habitat habitat refers to the physical address the the physical environment in which an animal lives is called as habitat so here this animal the cheetah is move, moved from african nation to india where there is a vast change of flora and the fauna so that is true second a change in niche what is a niche the functional role of an animal is called as a niche now let's take for example in africa uh, the cheetahs where it was once lived they hunted on antelopes gazelles impalas that is a prey species in africa but when the same cheetah is relocated to india the prey species are usually cheetal cheetals uh, nilgai uh, um, and also samba deer these are the primary prey species for uh, uh, the relocated cheetah in india so when the prey changes remember the functional role of an animal also changes and therefore that's a change in niche yes is there a change in habitat yes so therefore for this question the correct answer is both 1 and 2 there is a change in habitat there is a change in niche also let's move to question number 27 which type of immune cell is involved in the elimination of viral infected cells in the human body a b cells b cells are primary involved in the production of antibodies so no t helper cells t helper cells are primarily involved in the coordination of immune responses during infections coordination is a key word so this is also not correct t cytotoxic cells also called as t h cells it is also called as T8 cells. T helper cells is called as T4 cells. T cytotoxic cells are also called as T8 cells. T8 cells, T cytotoxic cells are important. You know how they do? They don't do kind of this indirect killing. Antibodies will kill indirectly. 
T helper cells kill indirectly, but the cytotoxic, you know, they are like assassins of the immune system. Assassins, once they target, oh, this cell is a problem, they will go kill it. They are involved in direct killing of infected cells. That is the reason why to fight against cancer and to fight against virally infected cells, these cells are very important. So, T cytotoxic cells plays a primary role in fighting against cancer and second to fight against viral infections. So, for 27th question, C is the answer. In question number 28, in a recent development, scientists aim to grow brain cultures in the lab which are coupled to real world sensors and input output devices where a living tissue is connected to a electronic input output devices. This is what the whole question stands for. Now what this can be called as? What this can be called as? Whether can this be called as synthetic biology? No. Synthetic biology is when an existing organism is engineered to provide them with a new characteristics or creation of a new organism that does not occur in nature. For example, in 2006, a new bacterium was created which does not, which is not found in nature. So that is an example of a synthetic biology or when we make a new GM bacteria, a new GM crop. That is synthetic biology. When we make something engineering, when we create something new, that is synthetic. Here that is not happening. So synthetic biology is not correct. AI coupled to neuro simulation. No, that is something I made it up. What is humanoids? Humanoids are robots that resembles humans morphology. Pakaratika, they look like a human. Human head, two hands, two legs, the, the trunk of a human body. Something similar to human structure. They are called as humanoids. For example, Sophia created by UAE, that is a humanoid. Here it is not talking about humanoid. So the depiction given in the question is a reference to biocomputers. When your brain cells are connected to an input output devices for performance assessment, now that is called as biocomputers. For the question 28, the correct answer is B, biocomputers. Then question number 32, question number 32, as a consequence of eutrophication, as a consequence of eutrophication, eutrophication means what? Excessive growth of algae in a water body due to an abundant presence of nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus. So, as a consequence of eutrophication in a freshwater lake, which of the following changes might happen to its ecological pyramid? Now, this question is, if eutrophication happens, what will happen to the ecological pyramid? Its pyramid of energy will become inverted. You should have read, pyramid of energy will always be upright. It will never be inverted. So, one is wrong. Now, when one is wrong, this can be eliminated this can be eliminated. Now we have 2 and 2 and 3. Now find out whether the third statement is correct or not. Its ecological pyramid will provide explanation for biomagnification. What we are talking about in biomagnification? Biomagnification is the gradual increase of a substance when it moves through the food chain. That is called as biomagnification. One eaten by another, that eaten by another, that eaten by another. Gradually, the concentration increases. That is called as biomagnification. So, what we are saying in ecological pyramid, in ecological pyramid, we put like this. So, ecological pyramid is something similar to the food chain. And that way, ecological pyramid also provide explanation for the biomagnification correct. So, for the question number 32, the correct answer is 2 and 3. 2 is correct, 3 is also correct. Let us move to question number 33.
consider the following statements that compares methane with that of carbon dioxide. Comparison of a methane with the carbon dioxide. Methane emissions from livestock. So, methane emissions from livestock. This is also called as biogenic methane. Because this is a methane produced due to fermentation that happens in the rumen of livestock. It can be regarded as rice recycled carbon. Let us look at this a little more slowly. That is atmospheric carbon dioxide. And this atmospheric carbon dioxide is absorbed by grasses, trees, they absorb it and they grow. It is these biomass, the plants and the trees, which is eaten by the herbivores. So, the herbivores absorbed carbon, that the carbon entered the plants like grasses and trees. It is this plant which is eaten by herbivores. Herbivores like livestock, like cattle, sheep, etc. It is these herbivores which releases methane. So, this carbon actually coming from where? Coming from the atmospheric carbon dioxide. If you look at this, for example, if the plant had absorbed 100 carbon dioxide molecules, take for example 100 carbon dioxide molecules, the 100, car 100 carbon dioxide molecules in a way is changed into methane and the methane once again releases back into the same carbon dioxide again. So, it is like a recycling of methane. This is a part of the carbon cycle. You understand? So, methane emissions from livestock can be regarded as a recycled carbon, correct? This is in fact a very revolutionary viewpoint. In a way, methane emissions does not add anything new. It takes what is already in the atmosphere, gives it back. The only difference, you know, the only difference is this. Methane is something a more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. That is the problem. Otherwise, it is a recycled carbon. So, this is a correct statement. One is correct. So, we can eliminate this. The second statement, carbon emissions from fossil fuels adds more carbon to the atmosphere. Carbon emissions from fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are the carbon rich substances that has been locked in the earth for millions of years. This is not like a methane. This is not like a biogenic methane. This has been locked up in the atmosphere. When we take those fossil fuels and burn them, they add extra carbon dioxide. But this biogenic methane is not like that. So, second statement, methane emissions from fossil fuels adds more carbon to the atmosphere than methane emissions from livestock. Yeah, this is a correct statement. So, the answer is both one and two. Next question, hydrogen is emerging as one of the leading options for storing energy, big story. The question, real question is this, in this context, which of the processes given below are needed to make green hydrogen, needed to make green hydrogen? That is what the question is about. So, green hydrogen, green hydrogen, how the green hydrogen is made, green hydrogen, usually we let us leave the green hydrogen has traditionally been made by the process called as steam reformation of methane. Steam reformation of methane is a common process where hydrogen has traditionally been produced. But methane, which is a fossil fuel, so we would like to uh, move away from this. This Hydrogen produced from the steam reformation of a methane is called as grey hydrogen. When the same is done with the coal, it is called as black hydrogen. 
Now, what is green hydrogen now? Green hydrogen is produced by the electrolysis of water. Water is simply hydrogen and oxygen. When it is electrolyzed, it gets split into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So, that is called as green hydrogen. But the next question comes, what is the form of electricity we use for the electrolysis? You know, electrolysis needs electricity. Remember, this has to be a renewable electricity. So, green, energy, green hydrogen uses renewable electricity for the electrolysis of water. Now, the next question comes, what is the kind of electricity? We know there is two kind of formats of electricity called as AC current, DC current, you know, alternative current, direct current. In any battery system, remember, in any battery system, it is always DC, never AC. Alternative current, in one phase, it changes. Half a moment, it will be this pole plus minus. The next moment, it will change its orientation. That's why it's called as alternating current. It cannot be used for electrolysis. Electrolysis, it has to be standard positive. It has to be standard negative. So, direct the current, remember, this is a thing. For any battery systems, alternative current, I'm sorry, direct current is what always used. So, green hydrogen, to make the green hydrogen, what is used? Not the alternating current, direct current, DC is used. So, wrong, one is wrong. Oh, just one moment. So, there is a, there is a typo that happened here. So, alternating current supply cannot be used uh, for the carrying out of electrolysis. It has to be direct current. So, therefore, okay, I will I'll, I'll leave this, I will come back. The second statement, gas chromatography, that is, what is gas chromatography? Gas chromatography is a separation method. Is a separation method that is used for mixture of gases and solids. I'm sorry, gases and liquids. If there is a liquid mixture, you want to separate them out. We can use gas chromatography. For a gaseous and liquid mixtures, gas chromatography can be used. But in the electrolysis of water, there is no need for that. There is no need for any separation because pure hydrogen, pure oxygen is released. There is no need to separate. And therefore, gas chromatography is not needed. Carbon capture and sequestration facilities to capture the released carbon. Because during the electrolysis of water, please see, there is no emission of carbon. And therefore, there is no need for CCS, carbon capture and sequestration. So, 2 and 3 is wrong. The answer has to be 1 only, but I wanted to give direct current, but there has been a typo there. So, the correct answer is direct current. So, please change this. It has to be direct current supply to carry electrolysis of water. That is the intention behind the question. So, please change that. Then, let us move to question number 54. 51. Consider the following statements regarding climate and clean air collision. It is a voluntary partnership. This climate and clean air collision was formed in 2012 by UNEP and six partner countries. But remember, in the six partner countries who are the original founders of climate and clean air coalition, India is not. India later joined the coalition, but originally it was not. So, it is a voluntary partnership to improve air quality and to protect And to protect the climate by reducing long-lived climate pollutants. Very wrong. Climate and clean air pollution is intended to reduce the short-lived climate pollutants. Short-lived climate pollutants. It includes black carbon, 
एच एफ सी ओजोन ट्रोपोसोरिक ओजोन एंड नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड so that that these are the four which are called as short lived climate pollutants so long lived climate pollutants it makes the two statements this two options can be eliminated the second one india formally joined ccac becoming the 65th country to join the partnership yes that is a correct statement so for the question number 51 d two only is the right answer then question number 54 Question number fifty-four. For the process of ocean fertilization, which nutrients are potential candidates that can be used? Ocean fertilization. It is a type of a geoengineering technology whereby the accelerated growth of phytoplanktons in the oceans can be used to absorb atmospheric carbon dioxide. Which in turn mitigate climate change. So mitigation of the climate change can be done by many methods. One of the method is called as ocean fertilization. What we do in ocean fertilization? We want the phytoplanktons in the oceans to grow more. By growing them more, it absorbs more carbon dioxide. That's a very simple process. Fertilization, I am now. What the fertilization means? We add kind of nutrients to grow. to facilitate the growth where we do it we do it in ocean normally uh, uh, the the minerals that are required for the growth of plants are usually called as macro nutrients and micro nutrients and among the macro nutrients nitrogen and phosphorus are very important so these two are used in ocean fertilization correct but in addition iron and zinc are called as micro nutrients and iron and zinc is also used the potential candidates it has already been used in ocean fertilization experiments so in ocean fertilization we can use both the macro as well as micro nutrients to uh, to improve the growth of phytoplankton so 54th question 1 2 3 and 4 is the answer for this then question number 55 climate financing what which of the following comes under climate financing under unf triple c whether global environment facility comes yes global environment facility is the official funding partner for unf triple c correct adaptation fund created in 2008 under kyoto protocol yes that is also a part of climate financing clean development mechanism also come under kyoto protocol kyoto protocol which enables a developed country to fund clean projects in developing country which in turn generates uh, certified emission reduction cer certified emission reduction units so this is also a part of climate financing under unf triple c green climate fund first proposed in 2009 in copenhagen climate summit which involves the commitment of developed countries to sponsor 100 billion dollars every year until 2024 yes that is also part of climate financing so for this 55th question all the four is the answer question number 56 Question number fifty-six. With India as the second largest sugar-producing country, there are certain inevitable outcomes emerging from the sugar industry affecting the environment. In this context, which of the following pollution is associated with the sugar industry? Sugar industry is involved with a certain amount of uh, uh, pollution that is involved. What are the pollution involved? Most often, the molasses, 
means the crush to sugar cane, the bagasse, molasses and uh, bagasse involves the two major pollutants emerging from the sugar industries. It also involves liquid effluents that is being let out to be drained into the nearby water bodies. So these are the major pollutants, but what it causes? High BOD content in its effluents, yes. Because these effluents with the high organic content, with the high organic substances, reduces the dissolved oxygen in the nearby water bodies. When the dissolved oxygen is lesser, BOD value becomes higher. When the dissolved oxygen becomes lesser, it means BOD is higher. They are inversely related to each other. BO, dissolved oxygen and BOD are inversely related. So therefore, this is correct. High BOD content. Second, presence of heavy metals. No. Sugar industries does not use any heavy metals in the process and therefore, heavy metals like lithium, lead, arsenic. No, they are not associated with the sugar industry. Therefore, two is wrong. If you know, if you observe this heavy metals two, then you can easily see that you can eliminate this and you can eliminate this. Then comes the next last option, high sulfur rich effluents. Yes, sugarcane bagasse is known to be very rich in sulfur and therefore when they are crushed, the effluents are also rich in sulfur content. And therefore, 4 is also correct. So, for this question, 1, 3 and 4 is the right answer. Then let us move on to question number 71. Question number 71. Which of the following applications are derived from RFID principle? RFID principle, principle means radio frequency identification principle. And this RFID is used in contactless debit card and credit cards. Yes, we have tap and pay system, right? That based on RFID. It is also used in fast tag. This RFID is a short range wireless communication that will be effective within um, uh, 5 to 15 meters. This will be applicable only to 5 to 15 meters. It is a short range communication, wireless communication system um, which uses radio waves. That is called as RFID. It is used in contactless debit and credit cards. It is used in fast track. It is also used in tracking inventories. It is also used in uh, passport verification at certain airports. For example, in US and Europe, this uh, fast, uh, this RFID associated passports are given to the citizens and therefore it is used in all the four. So, question number 71. All the four, D, all the four is the answer. Question number 72. In the recent times, the usage of FOLED has increased immensely in electronic gadgets. What is the main use of this technology? LED stands for light emitting diode. OLED stands for organic light emitting diode. The major difference between LED and OLED is that in LED, it is called as a passive light emission technology where there is a backlight is required for the screen to be viewed. Backlight. And then there is a LED panel. So this is what the operation of the LED screen. But in OLED, that between the two electrodes, an organic layer is switched between, which can produce light of its own. And therefore, it is called as an active light emission technology, which does not use as a backlit uh, uh, application. It does not use backlit. And therefore, the brightness and its uh, color quality, its color reproduction is known to be much superior than LED panels. That's called as OLED. But nowadays we have certain phones which are foldable, Galaxy Z phones, there are foldable tablets. Now that is called as FOLED, flexible organic light emitting technology. So what is the use? It is used in flexible and foldable displays in electronic gadgets. 
v is the answer for this. Then question number 70, consider the following statements about the Forest Rights Act 2006. It empowers the central government for the diversion of forests including filling of trees to construct certain civic amenities like hospitals, schools, certain civic buildings like panjayat office, etc. Yes, section 2 of the act empowers central government to do so. Correct. Second, the rights conferred by the act. What are the rights? Forest rights are conferred both individual as well as community rights. Can be enjoyed only by those forest dwelling communities who are residing in the forest area before 2005. This is also correct. For example, the act came into force from 2006 onward. What if a community which entered the forest in 2008, now they want to enjoy the forest rights? No. This is applicable only for those forest dwelling communities who were living in the forest before the legislation coming into force. So that's what the second statement is. That is also perfectly correct. Correct. Third. It is not the Gram Shabha but the central government which is responsible for delineating the list of forest rights. Wrong. Under section 3, it is the Gram Shabha which is the responsible institution for identifying and for enforcing the rights granted under the act. It is not the central government. So the third one is wrong. The correct answer is 1 and 2. The correct answer is 1 and 2. Let us move to question number 77. Which of the following statements is uh, correct about the deposits of methane hydrate? Methane hydrate, it is usually found in deep ocean uh, environments where in the deep ocean environments, the microbial activity produces methane. Because it is anaerobic conditions, no. So, because this methane, which is under low temperature and high pressure, interacts with the nearby water molecules to form methane surrounded by water molecules. So, methane hydrate is very similar to ice structure. The only difference is within the ice crystal structure, methane is trapped. This methane hydrate structure is maintained only when the temperature is low and the pressure is higher. If you mine it and take it slowly above, what happens? Temperature increases, pressure also drops. Now what happens is this ice structure breaks apart and the methane is emitted into the atmosphere. Therefore, we know methane hydrate, but the problem is exploration is possible. But Commercial exploitation of the methane hydrate is a very difficult task because the moment you bring it to the surface, it gets vaporized. All will be lost. So that is one major problem with that methane hydrate. Now let us look at the statements. So first one, it is a crystalline solid, solid that consists of a methane molecule surrounded by a cage of interlocking water molecules, correct? Enormous amounts of methane hydrate are found between the Arctic and Antarctic system, correct? And in sedimentary deposits along continental margins, yes, this is also correct. Even in an Indian uh, sub subcontinent, methane hydrate are more to be more to be found in the Arabian Sea rather than Bay of Bengal. This methane hydrates are more, more to be found in Arabian Sea. So, second is correct. Third statement: methane in atmosphere oxidizes to carbon dioxide after the decade or two. The atmospheric lifetime of a methane is about 12 years. What happens when the methane is in the air? about 12 years or so, it slowly gets oxidized when methane CH4 is oxidized, it changes into carbon dioxide. That is a correct statement. So, for this question 1, 2, 1, 3, B, all the three statements are correct. Then question number 89, with regard to kelp forests, Consider the following statements. What is a kelp forest? Kelp forests are dense underwater growth which are usually found in temperate cold waters. They are not found in warm waters at all. Kelp forests are not generally found in warm waters. 
even though there are some report about the tropical deep waters are known to have kelp but the true kelp forests are found only in temperate cold waters so this kelp forest kind of this is like a tree like growth that happens in shallow temperate cold water shallow you know these are nothing but it looks like a plant it will be having a stem it will be having like a leaves you may think it's a plant no it is not actually a plant it is an algae but you may think sir this is having a leaves a bigger structure algae we know it's very small that's the point here it is called as macro algae so kelp forest is formed by the growth of macro algae particularly what is called as brown algae brown algae is responsible for the growth of this kelp forests so they are widely distributed along the shallow waters of almost all latitudes wrong it has been found to be mostly distributed on temperate and polar latitudes not all latitudes so one is wrong second india does not have any such kelp forest it is also true india do not have any kelp forest at all third they are found by algal growth which algae brown algae i told you right so three is correct so the correct answer is the correct the correct answer for this question is second and third statement are correct 89 89 two and three is correct and question number 90 microbial oil microbial oil often seen in the news can be produced from which of the following organisms now this is an oil which is produced from oil forming microorganisms called as oleaginous oleaginous microorganisms which can be a fungi yeast bacteria algae but not bryophyte plants bryophytes are usually not known to produce oils at all usually when the body weight percentage contains 20 percentage or more oil content it is called as oleaginous microorganisms 20 percentage or higher it has to be oil content so that can be fungi yeast bacteria and algae among the four yeast is considered to be the most preferable candidate for microbial oil because it can even known to form 70 percentage proportion of the weight in oil so yeast is the most preferred so five should not be there if you eliminate five this is in fact a easy question if you know bryophytic plants is a wrong option then you can easily zero in on 1 2 3 and 4 as a correct answer let's move on to our 91st question from the statements given below identify the crocodile species it is the largest crocodile species in the world okay we don't have much information it is found only in the indian subcontinent now that is important clue black cayman it is a crocodile species which is found distributed in the amazonian river systems so this is not correct then we have nile crocodile which is distributed on the nile and its tributaries wrong so you have two more gharial and magar crocodiles now let's look at the next one they are potentially dangerous to humans compared to other crocodile species found in india that's true in fact among the crocodile species one is considered to be most dangerous second it is not a critically endangered you know gharial is critically endangered species but magar crocodile is a vulnerable species it is also considered to be the largest crocodile species in the world which is magar crocodile so magar crocodile widely distributed in indian subcontinent it is found in southeast asia as well as it is found in indian subcontinent like pakistan bangladesh india etc and therefore all the four is applicable to magar crocodile that is the answer let's look let's move to the last question question number 99 
for uh, nuclear fusion can be done using which fuel? What can be used as a fuel? We usually say isotopes of hydrogen is used as a fuel. But specifically what? Isotopes of hydrogen is used as a fuel. But you should know very well, uranium is not using fusion. That basic point you should know. Therefore, 4 eliminated. So, at least you are now can eliminate 50 percentage. Now, you are left with the 2 and 3, 1 and 2. What about protium? The three isotopes of hydrogen, one is called as protium, the second is deuterium, third is tritium. Usually, nuclear fusion is to be carried between deuterium and tritium. That is what the primary candidates require for a fusion reaction to happen. The correct answer is 2, 1, 3. Therefore, question number 99, B, 2, 1, 3 is the right answer. Okay, friends. So I hope this mock test has been of immense useful to you. Please follow us. Please subscribe. Please follow the mock test, which is going to continue for the coming weeks. And let your revision be more enhanced and your time to be productively used through our free mock test. All the best for the other exams and also your quick preparation in the coming days. Thank you. Ah, right. So we shall take up some economic questions for discussion today. So it starts from question number 21. So we can see here we have asked about <coughs> India's trade position. You can expect one or two questions from India's basket composition as to how much it exports, how much it exports, those kind of things. So you see here the question we have asked is about who is the largest exporter of the world. So the answer here for this question will be <coughs> Brazil. Okay, so remind that the exporter is Brazil and of course since last year, till last year, the largest producer of sugar was also Brazil. But in 2022, there was a PAB report which stated that due to bumper crop of sugar cane in India, we have overtaken, we have over, uh, surpassed Brazil to be the top most sugar producing country in the world. But this is not a permanent data. We can't say that India has attained number one, whether it is going to sustain at this number one position. As the largest producer or not, we do not know because next year we have to wait and see. Last year, because of the decline in the production of Brazil and our production increased and only due to this position, we have taken the number one position. Okay, so maybe if they ask that if India is the largest exporter or producer of sugar cane, it is true only for that last year. That is 2022 only, India was the largest producer. Okay, right. <clears throat> So question number 22, which of the following is true regarding literacy rate in India? What is literacy rate which are regarding the literacy rate? Who are the literate? The answer will be question option A. That is the total percentage of the population who are aged 7 years or above who can read and write with understanding in any language. Understand? Any language. So we have put some options here like uh, the ability to speak with understanding, the ability to uh, the 15 years and above and also here we have mentioned about the schedules, the 8th schedule languages and all. Nothing of that will be the answer. Answer is plainly A. That is total percentage of the population 7 years and above who can read and write in any language. Okay. So the next question, question number 23. The term public debt. So public debt means the government's debt. So the government debt here means a debt which the government incurs as a liability to pay back, pay back, the direct debt of the government. So one, internal debt through borrowings, yes of course, the receipts of the public account of India, receipts of the public account of India are not to be counted as the public debt of the government. Of course it could be a liability, there is a liability but it is not a direct liability of the government of India. Anything that it borrows against the public account of India. For example, the government of India may issue a special kind of securities. That will be called as securities issued against the National Small Savings Fund. Whenever you make a deposit in the National Small Savings Fund, it will go into the public account of India. The mere receipts should not be considered as a public debt. But if at all the government borrows against the public debt of, or public account of India, that will be considered as public debt in India. And here, therefore, we have just put the word receipts of the public account. Not all receipts are the debt of the government. Therefore, you have to remove two. 
clear? So removing 2, you get 1, 1 and 3. External borrowings of the government, whatever it might be, whether it borrows in the domestic market or the external market, they constitute the public debt of India. When it comes to the composition of the public debt, we do know that India's 95% of the public debt constitutes the domestic debt. The external debt is only around 5% and therefore 1 and 3. They are correct. So, to question number 23, the answer is 1 and 3. Okay. So, here we have asked a question regarding credit rationing. Which of the, which of the following terms correctly explains credit rationing? Right. You could be confused with this particular C. Right. It is a situation in which banks lend credit only to the prior sec priority sector areas. This, in fact, is not true. Rationing means, for example, you do know the concept of rationing. You go and visit the ration shop. Why is the government rationing food? It is rationing food because food may not go to people who are not able to pay for that. And that is why the government is rationing. In that same way, if at all there is a competitiveness for availing credit, the industrialists, the big shots only will come and get credit. So, even if a person is willing to pay extra interest for that, still they should be barred. We will not allow them. That process is what is called as credit rationing. So, credit rationing by, uh, by disincentivizing or let us say if you look at option B, it is a situation in which banks deny credit to the borrowers even if they are pay, willing to pay higher interest rates. For example, there is an industrialist who wants to take some amount of loans and he is willing to pay 11%, 12% of interest. That will not be given because they have reached a limit. That is what is called as credit rationing. So, the correct option for question number 38 is B. Question number 39. So, those who are, who have not written the mock test in our institutes and those who are watching this video, whenever we go through this particular question, we will also put the question in the description and you can also download the link and attempt by yourself. Or if you are just happening to see this video, take a pause, look at the answers, try to answer yourself and then look at, look into the, the explanation because we are not going to have a, uh, we are going to have a very quick discussion during this time. Okay. So, Essential Commodities Act, which of the following are part of the Essential Commodities Act? 1955. One, cotton seeds, inorganic fertilizers, drugs, do they form a part of the essential commodities? Yes, of course. We have a separate list called as a national list for essential medicines. The statutory backing comes from this Essential Commodities Act. Okay. So, national pharmaceutical pricing authority will be involved in enumerating the list of drugs that will be coming under the essential commodities. Okay, right. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, almost all of them are part, they have been included under the essential commodities and therefore D, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, they will be the correct option. Okay, right. Now moving on to question number 46. With respect to direct benefit transfer, the DBT scheme or the DBT mission that the government has come out with, what is the following statement and you have to choose which is correct. It is used to transfer money only to the beneficiaries of centrally sponsored scheme. It is not like that. You do know that you have to apply your logic. Central sponsored scheme, central sector schemes, both of them will be eligible for it. Okay. Mostly central sector scheme. The government coming out with its central government sponsoring or financing the entire scheme have been brought under the ambit of DBT. Okay. And for this is blatantly incorrect. So, remove one. Two, the money transferred in this DBT is spent from the Consolidated Fund of India. Whether it is right or wrong, yes, of course, it has to be spent from the Consolidated Fund of India. The DBT mission is placed under the Cabinet Secretariat. This could be a tricky situation. You may not know this fact. But of course, this is a correct statement, right? So, first, during the initiation of this uh, DBT mission, it was under the purview of the Planning Commission and then we transferred some other department and finally, now it is under the operation of the Cabinet Secretariat, okay? Therefore, 2 and 3. 2 is correct, 3 is correct. So, option B is correct for this particular question. So, look at question number 47, which of the following is appropriate regarding pent-up demand? So, what is pent-up demand? The answer is D. 
a rapid increase in demand for a service or a product usually following a period of subdued spending. So this word was in vogue, was in fashion, especially after this uh, COVID situation because during COVID, because of lockdown, not many could uh, uh, spend as they wished and because also of also the lower disposable income, there was a huge demand that was being contained. So once the lockdown was over, once the economy was opening up, there was a huge resurgence in this consumption. That is called as pent-up demand. So option will be D, the correct option for this question. So question number 47 is D. So question number 48, let's look at question number 48. Which of the following is correct regarding urban cooperative banks, UCCPs? They are not allowed to lend money for agricultural purposes. Whether this right or wrong? Wrong. Okay. They are allowed. So, till until a time, until 1960, I don't know the exact year, around that time, around 1970s only, there was a prohibition that the urban cooperative banks should not lend for agricultural purposes. But post that, we have, <coughs> we have allowed it for these kind of purposes. So, one is incorrect. Second, the registration, the management and the liquidation are governed by the RBI under the Regula Banking Regulation Act. Whether this is right or wrong, this is incorrect. Why is this incorrect? Because if you look at urban cooperative banks, they have come under the duality of control. That is, both the state governments will be controlling them as well as the RBI. How does the RBI control them? RBI controls the financial operations, for example, compliances of balance sheets, uh, the, if at all there is a norm for them, the supervisory action framework, these kind of supervision and regulation will be under the control of, financial regulation will be under the control of the RBI, but the registration, how the management should behave, what kind of board members they should have, how should the liquidation be done, if at all there is a failure, all of this will be done by the respective state government and therefore this is incorrect clear so one and two are incorrect so the correct option for this question number 48 is neither one nor two Right. So, question number 74, this also I have taken according to the pattern of the previous year question. So, if you look at AIIB, Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank, which is correct. There are more than 100 members of this institution. Maybe you could be thinking that whether UPS is asking these kind of questions or not. This is a pattern that I have directly lifted from a previous year question. They have asked this type of questions. They are not asking you whether you have to know uh, the number is 100 or 101 or 102. No. They will either be exaggerating or they will be lowering the number. You should know that the, the takers for Asian infrastructure uh, and investment bank has been high and its uh, um, coverage or its members are not only limited to Asia, it's limited across the world. And therefore, then many members have become parts or partners or members to this particular institution and therefore hardly around 106 members are part of this institution. So one is correct. Second, both India and USA are members of the AIIB. Whether this is right or wrong, you should know that AIIB is a bank that a multilateral institution which was floated by China, by China, and its way, the very essence of floating this idea is to challenge the domination of the Western countries, especially USA, in the operations of IMF and World Bank. You do know that the voting pattern of World Bank and IMF is highly skewed in favor of USA because of its financial clout and its voting rights in that institution. And only for that reason, we were the China, Chinese government was floating this idea and USA is in fact a rival to this institution. It's not a party to this institution. Both USA and Japan will not be members. These are the two key economies that are not part of the AIAB. Okay. Therefore, two is incorrect. But is India a part? Yes, definitely India is a part. So one and one is correct, two is incorrect. Therefore, one only, 74. So coming to this particular question, question number 75. If you see, we have asked about cropping intensity. First statement speaks about the definition of cropping intensity. 
it is the ratio of the gross cropped area to net sown area. What is cropped area? What is sown area? Sown area speaks about the area in which you sow. For example, you have one acre of land, that will be the sown area. Cropped area means within that sown area, how much area or how much of that percentage you are actually cropping, which means how many times you have cultivated in that particular land. So usually we go for short uh, crops and therefore the cropping intensity can be high. And therefore when you look at this ratio, there is a possibility that gross cropped area will be high, net sown area can be lesser and therefore it can be always higher than 100 percentage. India is not only 100 percent in recent years, ever since we had independence, even during the time of independence, India's cropping intensity was 100 percentage. We have one land but we are cropping it more than once, okay. Therefore, one is correct, two is also correct, All right. So, question number 76, if you look at this question, you can know that what is, what can be used by the RBA to control foreign exchange rate, currency swap agreements, yes. See. The key here is control. Controlling foreign exchange rate, what is the meaning of controlling? Controlling foreign exchange rate means you can either control it in the form of reducing the rates or increasing the rates. For example, appreciation also you have to control, depreciation also one has to control. Which of the following will aid the RBA in controlling? That is what is the question. So decreasing the interest rates may allow for what? When you increase, decrease the interest rates, maybe there will be a flight of capital happening. When flight of capital is happening, what will happen? India will undergo depreciation. Let us now say that India has been undergoing appreciation in the last one to two years very steeply due to which its export competitiveness has been hit. And when the export competitiveness has become lower, remember export not to boost imports what we should do. We have to allow for the depreciation. This is also a manner of controlling. We have to control both depreciation as well as appreciation. And therefore, if you had a doubt in this, make it clear that in the question, we have just asked what is controlling. We are not asking how to reduce the foreign exchange rates. And therefore, one, two, three, all of this can control. So question number I would say 78, blue economy, the concept advocates the greening of uh, ocean development strategies for higher productivity. It's a very general statement. Of course, it is right. You might be confused with the greening. Greening means using sustainable practices. That's all. Okay. Therefore, no need to think so deep into this particular word. Okay. So, one is right. If you look at statement number two, it's a very blatantly wrong statement. What does it say? It says that the deep ocean mission is against the spirit of the blue economy. No, in fact, it is not. It is promoting the concept of blue economy. And therefore, this is incorrect. One is correct. So, question number 79, the answer is A. Pre-PAC. What is this pre-PAC framework? Pre-PAC framework is an idea, is a term that has been recently in news that is associated with the MSME's bad loan resolution. This is a concept introduced post-2020, that is COVID, in IBC. In the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, we allowed for something called as pre-PAC resolution. Certain MSMEs, if they come out with a prior plan of liquidation or resolution, and if they submit it to the NCLT, then that particular company will be liquidated or resolved in that particular plan. Okay. So, it will be very quick. That is what is called as pre plaque framework. And so, the answer is resolution of a debt. Okay. So, question number 92, I think. Our question will be there. Ah, 92. Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. This is a current affairs question. Recently, we, the government of India notified that any frauds that are related to the virtual digital assets or the cryptocurrencies as we know synonymously can be used under the can will be brought under the ambit of pmla the prevention of money laundering act this is correct by bringing it what does it say who is the enforcer of the pmla the enforcement director is the enforcer of the prevention of money laundering act and therefore this now is true so both one and two will be correct regarding Question number 92. So, question number uh, 93, we know, 
94, 95. Let's see question number 95. With respect to Indian economy, consider the following states. Which of the following are components of monetary policy? 1 and 2. This and this are not part of monetary policy. It's a very easy and elimination based question. So, answer will be 1 and 2. Question number 95. Question number 96. Cash management bills. What are cash management bills? They are generic to T bills. It's a kind of a T bill, but it will be below the 91 day treasury bill. It is mainly used to meet the temporary mismatches of the government. Whether this CMB can be used for financing the deficits of the government? No, they cannot be. Ways and means advances could also be used. For example, the government should already plan in prior how much treasury bills, how much government securities they will be uploading. They will have to float. On that basis, what will happen? On that basis, what will happen is that whenever they are, uh, well, let's say they have uh, calculated some amount. If they are facing any shortfalls in that amount, then that cannot, that only will be met through the ways and means advances and CMBs. They should not be used for the budget making process. Okay, therefore, this is correct. Cannot be used is correct. They are issued by the union government and not by the state government. It's also correct. So, one and two, both are correct for question number 95. Okay, so question number 97, if you see, fixation of the price levels is what type of an example? It's a support price. Why is it a support price and not an administered price? This is issued by whom? CACP. What is the CACP doing? It will be recommending the MSP, minimum support price. What is an administered price? An administered price is a price in which the government fixes the rate at which it should enter the market. But what will CACP do? It will not go and uh, uh, recommend the rate at which it has to be sold in the market. It will recommend the rates or the price at which the government had to procure from the market. And therefore, this is a support price. Question number 98. Consider the following with respect to excise, duty and petrol and diesel products. Only the central government has the power to levy excise duty on crude oil products is of course a correct statement. And does the state government not have any powers? They do have the powers to levy taxes, but they are not called as excise. They are called as VAT. Okay, there is a difference between VAT. It is a sales based tax, but excess, excise duty is a manufacturing based tax. Okay, so this is also correct. It is not government determined, but completely deregulated. Statement number three, constitution itself provides that the proceeds of the cess need not be shared. Yes, article 271 says that it will not be part of the divisible pool and therefore that is also correct. So one, two, three, all of them are correct options. Right. Yeah. And that's all for economy. All the best. Do well in the, we will meet again in the next mock test. Okay, thank you. Right. So, we will start with polity questions discussion. Read the first question. With regard to national parties, consider the following statements. Criterion for a party to be recognized as a national party is done by the Election Commission of India. See, all the technical details connected to the election will be done only by, only by the Election Commission of India. There is a handbook of Election Commission of India, which was published in 2019. Based on that handbook of Election Commission of India only, they have uh, categorized certain parties as recognized parties. National parties are regional parties or state parties. So, 2019 handbook of Election Commission of India is deciding this, which is why this answer is a, this statement is a right statement. Once a national party status is given, it cannot be revoked. This is wrong. Why? Because NCP has lost its national party status. So, as TMC has lost its national party status. So, the second statement is a wrong statement. National parties get a piece of land from the government in the national capital to build their party office may not be known to most of the students. But the point is that this is a correct statement. The Urban Affairs Ministry is issuing a guideline based on which if the 
national party is not having uh, an office in the national capital territory of Delhi, then a land will be given where they can build their party office. If the national party's president is not having a house to live in Delhi, he is eligible for a bungalow in Delhi if he is the president of the national party. So, this is a right statement. This is a right statement. Third statement is a wrong statement. So, the answer is what? Uh, second statement is a wrong statement. So, the answer is uh, 1 and 3 only. So, this is the right answer. Now, come to the second question regarding Parliament of India. The question is on regarding Parliament of India. While the leader of the house is a statutory position, is it a statutory position? Leader of house is a position which is not in the law of the parliament, whereas leader of opposition is a statutory position based on the 1977 act. So, leader of house is present in the rules of procedure of Lok Sabha. It is not there in the law. It is there in the rules of procedure of parliament. Leader of house is not a statutory position, whereas leader of opposition is a statutory position. Leader of house is present in the rules of procedure of Lok Sabha. So, the first statement is a wrong statement. Now, come to the second statement. Leader of the house should be a minister as well as the member of that house. Yes, you should be a MP and you should be a minister, then only you can be the leader of the house which is nominated by the Prime Minister himself. The, oppo, the office of whip is neither mentioned in the constitution nor in the rules of procedure is a right statement. So, it is not there in the constitution, it is not there in the rules of the house also. So, this is the answer then. One should not come, two and three is the right answer. B is the right answer, right. So, next question is go to 24, 24th question. Spoils system means what? The question is on spoils system. Which of the following statement best reflects a spoils system in politics? It means if you have supported the party, you will be awarded, rewarded for that. If you support the party, you will be getting good positions when the party comes to power. That is what is called a spoil system. Political manipulation of electoral boundary is gerrymandering. This is called as gerrymandering. That you are demarcating the territorial boundary in such a way that a particular group will be getting benefited. For example, there is a community called X community. You will demarcate the constituency in such a way that all the most of the X caste person will come in that particular constituency so that that X caste will be able to decide everything in that particular constituency. So, you are trying to manipulate the uh, demarcation in such a way that a particular group is getting benefited. That is what is called as gerrymandering and that is A. A practice in which the political party winning election rewards its workers and supporters by appointment to government post. Yes, this is what is called a spoil system. C. A system that makes the exercise of political power more arbitrary and restricts the space for political participation in the process of government selection. So, this is called as democratic backsliding. Democratic backslide. This is called as democratic backsliding. Simply called as autocracy autocracy and come to the D's, this is also same, a political system that prohibits all the opposition party, outlaws individual and group opposition to the state and its claims and exercises an extremely high degree of control and regulation over the public and private life. See, this autocracy will lead to totalitarianism. This is what is called as 
totalitarianism if democracy becomes autocracy it becomes arbitrary and this will end in what totalitarianism absolutely the individual rights will be suppressed so the best answer is spoil system b is the right answer 24th question now come to 25th question also from polity read the question consider the following statement regarding dpsp it has been amended only four times yes 42nd amendment act 44th amendment act 86th amendment act and 97th amendment act four times it has been amended according to constitution it shall be the duty of the state to apply these principles yes this is what is given in article 37 so this is right and this is right the parliament cannot amend the fundamental rights given under part 3 they can however they have to go by the basic structure doctrine case of another bharati so parliament can amend the fundamental rights but it shall not violate the basic structure that is what the judgment in the case of another bharati case so third statement is a wrong statement answer therefore is one and two only a is the right answer this is the 20 fifth question now come to the next question is 43 go to 43 26th okay ah governor yes consider the following statement regarding governors in india constitution does not lay down any grounds upon which governor may be removed yes there is no reason for removal and that is what is called as pleasure principle Office of governor cannot lie vacant. Yes, that is why if a governor is removed, then a retirement happens or he is removed in between. Some other governor will be in charge of this particular state. So, there cannot be any situation where the governor post is vacant. So, cannot lie vacant is a right statement. Governor of the state has additional charge. As the administrator of an adjoining union territory is not bound by the advice of the council of ministers. So, yes, the governor who is taking charge as administrator of union territory is not bound by the advice of the council of ministers. So, this is a right statement. Hence, all the three statements are right statements. Answer is therefore D. Next is what? 43. Oath of secrecy, who is going to undertake this oath of secrecy? There is no concept of secrecy, there is no concept of secrecy, there is no concept of secrecy. Only union minister will take oath as the minister, he will have this oath of secrecy, only union ministers in this list. Ministers, generally in the given list it is union minister. Okay. Then 44th come to Attorney General of India. According to the Constitution of India, Attorney General of India will resign when the government which appointed him will resign. No, there is no such case. If the government is uh, resigning, he will also go. He is not there. He need not resign. Attorney General can be a member of a Lok Sabha committee is a right statement. 88th article clearly says he has the right to audience in parliament and he can be a member of committee parliamentary committee so answer is two only 44 next is 45 which of the following cannot be suspended during emergency any case Article 21 cannot be suspended. Very straightforward question. 45. Next is 40, uh, 60. Directly go to 60. 60. Yes. The resignation of Speaker of Lok Sabha shall be addressed to 
go to article 94 class b it clearly says it has to be addressed to the deputy speaker 61 which article of the constitution of india safeguards right to eat a food of one's choice anything which is personal right to marriage comes under right to privacy which is a part of article 21 so anything connected to very personal things comes under the concept of personal liberty right to life and personal liberty is contained in article 21 which is why in 61st question article 21 is the right answer come to 62 national legal services authority it provides free of cost legal services to people yes it includes court fee process fee everything all the expenditures borne by the person which has to be borne by the person will be taken care of by the nalsa but at the same time nalsa will not pay any fine if it is imposed on a person free service does not include paying fine penalty on behalf of the person so this is also a right statement disabled person irrespective of income also will get the free services so all the three statements are correct statements then go to 63 federal features CAG is a federal feature he is appointed by the president of India so federalism and CAG CAG can audit all the state government's accounts also not federal independent judiciary is a federal integrated judiciary is unitary all India service is unitary federal house Rajya Sabha is simply called as federal house so answer is 2 and 5 65th question recently supreme court of india issued an order connecting to the rohingyas so rohingyas are who illegal migrants now the question is testing what a citizen is expected to do and what are not available for aliens that is what is the importance of this question or that is what is tested by this question what citizens should do what aliens will not have what citizens have they are fundamental duties they are alien people will fundamental duty apply to alien it applies only to citizens so they are not expected they can enjoy right to freedom right to freedom is available only for citizen not for alien they can enjoy protection against arrest and detention article 20 yes or no article 20 or 22 20 which applies to both alien as well as citizen so this is right they are not eligible for indian citizenship either by registration or naturalization yes or no the government itself was telling they people have come from bangladesh through from uh, myanmar through bangladesh so they are illegal migrants and they will not get citizenship status so this is also right answer therefore is three and four b is the right answer next is 64 64th question uh, 65th question Hicklin test whether something is obscene or not there was an advocate who filed a complaint against a person who came in the news that he was wearing a dress which was not proper so this test called as hicklin test was used by the british judiciary in uh, 19th century to see whether some thing is obscene or not okay so the test was used by the indian judiciary as well it was used by the indian judiciary as well in one of the cases the indian judiciary supreme court especially told no we will not apply this so the point is very clear that this is a test which applies to find out whether something is obscene or not okay nudity is not obscenity in one of the case supreme court told being nude is not obscene what is obscene is something which is triggering the sexual 
you know desires that should be called as obscene so nudity all forms of nudity will not come under the concept of obscene supreme court itself was uh, telling earlier so this simple fact that it is connected to test whether something is obscene or not next which question the question number uh, 60 uh, yes 969 we have to go 69 which is not there in the preamble. Liberty of expression, liberty of faith, e social justice is there. Equal justice is not there. Not there is equal justice. Three forms of justice, social, political, economic. There is no concept of equal justice. Okay. Now come to 70. Parliament can make law on all the three lists. Yes or no? Parliament can make law on all the Three list, yes. Parliament can direct the states to reserve money bill passed by the state legislature for president's consideration during financial emergency. Whether parliament will direct, center will direct, central government will direct. The answer is one only. Next is 81. Like Raj Sabha, Legislative Council is also a continuing chamber of the house it is not subjected to dissolution yes read article 171 the retiring members are eligible for re-election yes both one and two hmm. expunging some remarks has been made which is a very derogatory thing which has to be removed from the records of the parliament Okay, that is what is called as expunging. The decision on expunging is done by the speaker. Yes, it is based on predefined words. Only a set of predefined words can be no, no. This is a spontaneous decision. There is no list of words which is expunged. The checklist is there with the speaker and he is going to do that. No, that time if the speaker sees that it is not good, it will be removed from the records. That is what is called as expunging. So, instantly, spontaneously, presiding officer will take a decision. There is no list of words which has to be removed from the records. No such things. It shall not be reported by media. Yes, the media should not report. If the media is reporting, then media will be facing problem. The speaker or the presiding officer will even order for the arrest because there is a power called as power to punish for contempt or breach which comes under article 105 of the constitution parliamentary privileges so they cannot report what words has been expunged by the presiding officer okay so answer therefore is uh, one is right two is wrong three is right Answer is 1 and 3. The next is 82. Mm. Which committee is having semi judicial nature? Committee on privilege. Because if there is a breach of privilege, then they will inquire. They will inquire a case of breach of privilege and they will suggest action. So that is why. Like contempt of court power is there with the Supreme Court and High Court. It is having some semi-judicial function that is committee on privilege. Okay, so that is 82nd. Next is, that's all no. Yeah. 94 is my question. So this will be done by the other faculty. So some... 16 to 18 questions, I think 18 or 19 questions we have seen from Indian polity including the polity related current affairs. Other subject faculties will come and deal with the remaining topics, questions, right. So what you are expected to do? You are expected to find out how many questions you can, you know, attempt in the very first site. Minimum 30 questions will be there. Looking at the first instance, you will be able to identify the answer very fastly. So, 30 questions, very fastly you can attempt the questions correctly. 
10 questions very fastly you will be able to reject. So, 30 fast selection and 10 fast rejection, 40 is over, remaining 60 questions are there. In this 60 questions only the real game will be played by you. In that 60 question you should attempt to get 30 questions right. If 30 questions are right in the first instance very fastly, if 30 questions are made right in the last instance out of the remaining 60 questions and if 10 questions are fastly rejected by you, you will be able to cross 100. That is what is the strategy which you have to try in the next test. Okay. See you in the next test. Thank you. Hello and uh, welcome to the geography discussion of mock test 1 of Surajwal IS Academy. So the questions will begin from the geography question. The first geography question is question number 18 in your actual question paper, which asks about gravitational waves as ripples or ripples in the fabric of space time in the universe, which among the following events are generally producing strong gravitational waves. So gravitational waves are often caused by massive bodies which move at a great acceleration. And if you look at the options, all those are massive events which involve massive bodies as well as debris or other objects which will move in with a great uh, acceleration. So if you look at Big Bang explosion or collision of two black holes or supernova explosion and merging of neutron stars, all of these are massive events and they are, it is possible that they will give out gravitational waves when such events occur, okay. So your answer for question number 18 is D Delhi. The next question is question number 19. Ripples. So uh, ripples are nothing but so if there is a lake or a pool or something, if you drop a uh, rock or a drop of water, it will create wave-like structures which move away from uh, the events, right? So that is what's called as ripple. So you have to imagine the time and space fabric, time and space as something like a fabric. If you touch something or uh, drop a stone or something in the middle of a stretched fabric, then it's going to cause some rippling effect. Okay, other pairs are ripples. So ne the next one is question number 19. It reads, in Southern Hemisphere, which among the following period of the year experiences delayed sunset and advanced sunrise? So they are asking about delayed sunset and advanced uh, Sunrise. Abdina, the length of the day is long, longest. Younger Southern Hemisphere. La. Southern Hemisphere, longest day, uh, uh, longest day, somewhere around December. So you should have shortlisted between B and C, uh, D. Among those two, uh, some of you might have gotten stuck in this. That's where you have to think of the uh, winter solstice. Winter solstice is the time when the daytime is least in northern hemisphere and longest in southern hemisphere. So winter solstice in the, in the time of So even if you don't know the exact date, it's somewhere around 21, 22, 23 of December. Okay. So that falls in the second half of December. So answer for 19th question is D Delhi. Uh, then comes your 20th question, question on Turkey, uh, earthquake. So they are asking for what kind of tectonic plate boundary does North Anatolian fault, NAF, belong to? So there are two faults in that region which has been causing the series of earthquake in Turkey. One is North Anatolian fault, which is NAF. The other one is East Anatolian fault, which is EAF. North Anatolian fault is between Anatolian plate and Eurasian plate, while this uh, East Anatolian fault boundary is between 
Anatolian and Arabian plate. In the rend boundary, may it undergoes a transform motion. Okay, they both are transform boundaries. So look at your options. Conversion between Eurasian and Anatolian. So North Anatolian now le Anatolia or North. So your uh, it, the boundary should lie between Eurasian and Anatolian. Other Kramari in the option under African is not right. Anatolian and Eurasian, Arabian and Anatolian. This happens only on the east uh, east fault lada in the plateau, Arabian plateau. So after shortlisting between A and C, we should have some, had some knowledge that newspaper lada thli on the chip transform or lada conversion transfer because due to uh, fault uh, sorry the transform fault there newspaper le kudutna in all news articles they said it is because of the transform boundary between anatolian and eurasian plate and it was causing some peculiar kind of earthquake called strike slip earthquake matter normal earthquake uh, convergently or divergently on the strike slip or strike slip or ore or transform boundary la mattum okay so your answer is c for question number 20 So then comes your question number forty. Should be actually forty. So once you read through the statements, first statement, let us solve it. Come on, in tropical region, the western margins of the continents receive higher rainfall than eastern margins, owing to the influence of trade winds. So western margin la. Trade wind under easterly or westerly. Trade winds are easterly, so they flow, uh, blow from the east. So east land the cat that is there, na, every western margin la maladi ma payo. So statement one is wrong. Statement two: eastern margins of the continents receive higher rainfall than western margins, owing to the influence of trade winds. So the winds flow from the blow from the east, like it's given here. The trade winds often always uh, blow from the east. These are called yellow and uh, red. They are the trade winds. The ones in blue are westerlies. They are tandy polar regions. Let me know. Easterlies or westerlies? Again, easterlies. So statement two is right. Statement three, la baba. Temperate zone. Ah, uh, temperate zone. Na in between thirty-five and sixty. The eastern margins of those continents receive higher rainfall. Temperate zone, temperate zone, like western, like that, I think I'm wrong. So eastern margins will not receive higher rainfall. So this is also wrong. In temperate zone, the western margins of the continents receive higher rainfall than the eastern margins, so into influence of westerly. So your answer, answer should be two and four, which is D, Delhi, for question number forty. Okay. Question number forty-one, asking about tropical cyclones. Which among the following uh, favors the formation and intensification of tropical cyclones? So conditions of tropical cyclones. Can you tell me? This one would be easy to solve. So what are the conditions for tropical cyclones? So large sea surface with a temperature of twenty-seven uh, degrees or higher, and small difference in vertical wind speed. This is also required. A pre-existing weak, uh, low pressure area or low-level cyclonic circulation. This is also required. Upper convergence above the sea level system. So it diverges. If you remember the image of a cyclone, it converges at the lower levels but diverges at the upper level. That's and what's in between is the eye of the cyclone. So cyclone is what we are going to do. So just eliminating your option four. And knowing that two will be the right uh, one of the important conditions or a prerequisite for a cyclone, you can pinpoint it to option C. So forty-one, the answer is C. Question number forty-two. So question is regarding the distribution of fresh water in the world. Statement one: The amount of water in liquid form is more than the amount of water in frozen form. Correct? Ah, no. 
ஸோ இட் இஸ் ஜாகிரஃபி புக் எடுத்த உடனே டிஸ்ட்ரிபியூஷன் ஆஃப் வாட்டர் கொடுத்துருப்பான் வாட்டர் சாப்டர் படிக்கிறப்போ ஸோ ஒன் இஸ் டோட்லி ராங் பிகாஸ் தி அமௌண்ட் ஆஃப் ஃப்ரோசன் வாட்டர் இஸ் மோர் செகண்ட் ஸ்டேட்மெண்ட் தி அமௌண்ட் ஆஃப் கிரவுண்ட் வாட்டர் இஸ் லெஸ் தேன் தி அமௌண்ட் ஆஃப் சர்ஃபேஸ் வாட்டர் இது கரெக்டாக திஸ் இஸ் ஆல்சோ ராங் ஸோ த ஒன்லி திங் யூ ஹேவ் டு ரிமெம்பர் இஸ் த வாட்டர் தட் இஸ் அவைலபிள் ஃபார் அஸ் ரைட் அவே போர்ட்டபிள் ஃபார்மில் இருக்கிற மாதிரி சர்ஃபேஸ் வாட்டர் ரொம்ப கம்மி If you remember that fact, you will mark these two as wrong easily. And you can look at this uh, bar graph on how the water is distributed. Total water la 96.5 and more than 97% is saline. Less than 3% is fresh water which, is, which can be consumed. On the fresh water la 69%, close to 69% is in uh, frozen form. Uh, 31% na it is in water form that is liquid form adulayum <laughs> more than 30% is underground just uh, roughly 1% of all fresh water is on the surface okay so 40 second question both the statements are wrong so your answer is d delhi question 49 consider the following countries panch country kuduthirukanga which of the above countries share border with ukraine so ukraine is in news right now mukhyamana question mukhyamana countries for border la they have been asking in the past so the border countries of ukraine are uh, russia which everyone knows and belarus which is also a close ally of uh, russia poland Slovenia, Hungary, Romania and Moldova. Moldova is a landlocked country. It does not share any border with uh, the Caspian Sea. So, sorry, the Black Sea. Um, so, these are the countries which I just said. Russia, Belarus, Poland, Slovenia, Hungary, Romania and Moldova. So, these are the countries that share border with Russia. So, I said, what do I say? Slovenia, Hungary, Slovenia. Hungary. Huh? Slovenia Slovenia does have a border with Slovenia wa Slovenia and country agree there is only Slovenia Slovenia has a border with Ukraine there is another country with, uh, with a similar name called Slovakia which borders Czech Republic or galsa adora per Czechoslovakia so that borders Slovakia sorry uh, Czech Republic Slovakia in the side wala it is in central europe this is in these countries are in eastern europe okay so slovenia is does have a border with ukraine hungary ko iruke romania ko iruke turkey varadhu and poland will be there turkey ko ukraine ko nadula there is the black sea black sea taandi pona dhaan turkey po mudiyum or you have to cross a few countries so if you look at this map these are the countries Oh, sorry, uh, Slovakia will come, uh, not Slovenia. I'm sorry about this. So, your answer is C. Slovenia will not come. Slovenia will be uh, somewhere near Croatia. Uh, Slovakia is the country that forms a border with uh, Ukraine, not Slovenia. Okay. So, your answer is C for question number 49. Okay. Question number 49, answer is C. question number 52 so if you have read this act then you will know that everything is given except heat waves okay so the answer is b for this except heat wave all the things that are given are considered as disasters in india so you should remember that pest attacks are also disasters 53 question number 53 so they are asking about climate types so con- first statement la they have said confined to western margins uh, only three climate types are confined to western margins if you remember the table that is given in go chang leong uh, tropical level enna irukona subtropical level la it will be uh, deserts deserts ku mela uh, 
Mediterranean type climate. Adukumala, British type climate. Only these three are confined to western margins. And Nadu Lena Sona, deserts, uh, Adukavarama, deserts Kumala, uh, Mediterranean, and Adukumala, British. So something in between. The answer should be Mediterranean, probably. And the last point confirms it. Wet winter, whatever major climate type, that is Mediterranean. Is there any other place which has wet winter? December time, la northern hemisphere, la Malabayu, India. Coromandel coast of India. That is due to a unique formation called monsoon due to reversal of winds. Other than major climate types, la wet winter, wara wore at Western margin, is it? Illalana, I am talking about just this point. Wet winter or Amari or major climate types of Mediterranean. Okay, so your answer for this is Mediterranean. Western margin path of one is none of these lie in the western margin except this uh, desert. So, but desert lies below this. Okay, so your answer is Mediterranean uh, climate. Option C for 53. Statement 1. Nepal is bordered by four states of India. So, this thing you should apply your uh, memory and identify uh, if statement 1 is right or wrong. Nepal is the end state is the UP and Bihar. And in the end of the state, Uttarakhand is the Sikkim is the Sikkim is bordered by three uh, foreign countries. Sikkim ke India la ore or state the bordering state. Which state is that? West Bengal. So if Bihar has a border with Nepal, Sikkim also has a border with Nepal, but Sikkim does not have a border with Bihar. So this is how you think. Bihar has a border with Nepal. Sikkim also has a border with Nepal. But Sikkim does not have a border with Bihar. Because Sikkim has only one bordering state which is West Bengal. There is also another Indian state which has only one bordering state other than Meghalaya. Meghalaya has only Assam as a bordering state. Other than Bangladesh. So, Sikkim has a border with three foreign countries and only one Indian state. So, West Bengal should have a border with Nepal somewhere near Darjeeling. Okay. So, Darjeeling, Sikkim, sorry, uh, West Bengal, Sikkim, uh, Bihar, UP, and Uttarakhand. Say that all. Totally five, not just four. Okay. So, statement one is wrong. Other, Editale, you will get uh, two and three as the right answers. Yet, we'll look at the second statement. Bhutan is bordered by three states of India only. So, what are the states for Bhutan? Sikkim, Assam, and Arunachal Pradesh, where there is the Boom Dila Pass, Tawang, Nandabogon. So these are the three states. So statement two is right. Statement three, Papa. Bangladesh is bordered by five states of India only. West Bengal, Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mizoram. Okay. So those are the five states. So your answer for this is two and three only. B, Bombay for 66. 67. <coughs> Simli Paul. Simli Palkula Enna River Road. This is, is that Mahanadi. They are closely located, but it's not the answer. Mahanadi does not flow inside Simli Pal. There's a river called Subarnareka, which flows through Simli Pal National Park. And Subarnareka has no relation to Mahanadi. It's not a tributary or a distributary. It has no relation except that they both drain into Bay of Bengal. So one tappe, two baba. Panna and Betwa. Uh, this is where most of you are prone to go wrong. Because uh, you might have read in your current affairs that the Ken Betwa link might submerge the Panna National Park. But the river that actually flows through uh, the National Park, uh, Panna, is not Betwa, it is Ken. Link Motunam, Panna Gulabo. And the closest uh, river uh, for na this Panna National Park is Betwa. Sorry, Ken, not Betwa. <coughs> Third one, Bandhavgar zone. This is the only right path. Okay, your answer for question 67 is B, Bombay, three only. And there is a detailed map given in your explanation of the central Indian range of national parks. 68. 
which among the following rivers sometimes mentioned in the news is a tributary of shayok which itself is a tributary of indus tributary of shayok so kandipa satluj varadu gomalu varadu so you should be confused between gilgit and galwan and gilgit is also a direct tributary of indus it does not uh, it does is it's not a tributary of shayok okay so if you look into that map clearly so in the map on the it might not be present clearly in your atlas and you may have to use internet to locate rivers like galwan or sila chinna chinna periya periya river mottum atlas la koduthirupanga look into this image so this is river galwan and this is river shayok and this is indus shayok or time la poi indus la kalaka aranjichu so this is a tributary of indus and galwan is a small tributary of shayok okay so answer for 68 is c galwan <coughs> 83 so this is an easy question 83 where you can find orchids and rhododendrons in india so it should be somewhere in the uh, himalayas close to himalayas adpri varamari have only one option which is nanda devi so orchids often require a cold temperature okay matha edam illame this is uh, this also can provide a cold temperature but it does not have provide that higher latitude like uh, nanda devi does okay so rhododendron national park in india lo one iruke that is also located near nanda devi it's in uttarakhand so nanda devi national park uh, biosphere reserve is an easy answer for this so question 83 your answer is c it's a factual question so question 84 crops and geographical conditions so if you know about the crops then it's fine or else you can use some shortcuts or your personal knowledge into answering this question so where does barley grow இதில் எதில் பார்லி வளர்ற மாதிரி இருக்கும் பார்லி ரெக்வைர்ஸ் அ ஹாட் கிளைமேட் ஆர் கூல் கிளைமேட் வை ஸோ வாட்ஸ் பார்லி யூஸ்ட் ஃபார் மெயின்லி மெயின்லி யூஸ் டு மேக் பியர் பியர் எந்த மாதிரி கண்ட்ரிலலாம் வரும் விச் கண்ட்ரிஸ் ப்ரொடியூஸ் பியர் பியர் இஸ் ஐ மீன் தி ஆல்கஹாலிக் பெவரேஜ் ஜெர்மனி யுக்ரைன் இந்த மாதிரி கண்ட்ரீஸில் தான் வரும் ஸோ ஹவு இஸ் த வெதர் தேர் இட்ஸ் கூல் அண்ட் it may it can even thrive in poor soils okay add to rice rice idla indha mari condition la varum does rice require a good soil yes it does edla nal varuma idla poor la varad rice idla varum high altitude la varuma rice so uh, mid level altitude la varum romba high altitude la varad rice okay so this looks like the right answer high altitude la varam mari millets ah rice ah la tea ah edu which one comes in higher altitude t t is a better choice right so millets can be grown in poor soil with dry climates it can be used to mitigate climate change and all sorry uh, it can be used as an adaptive crops for climate change not mitigate okay so evlo mosamana vadalanalo millet vandru so this is your answer a2 vara mari na irukke rendu irukke and rice or b4 vara mari adula onnu da irukke okay so a is the right answer for question number 84 the detailed uh, details of all the crops and their conditions are given in your key you can go through that 85 uh, they are asking about indian monsoons and jet streams tropical easterly jet streams bring rainfall to eastern part it's not easterly jet stream it's westerly jet stream during the northeast monsoon second so first it's up second western disturbances bring rainfall to northwestern part of india during southwest monsoon season the western disturbances don't occur during southwest monsoon they occur during winter and la- late winter and the mar time la nadakum so this is also wrong so your answer is d neither so even with a little common sense you could have eliminated both you know 
மான்சூன் டைம்ல எதுக்கு இந்தியாவில் இது மழை எடுத்துட்டு வரப்போ மான்சூன் டைம்ல மான்சூன் இண்டியா மழை எடுத்துட்டு வந்துடும் மான்சூன் டைம் முடிஞ்சதுக்கு அப்புறமா வெஸ்டர்ன் டிஸ்டர்பன்ஸ்ல மழை பெய்யும் அண்ட் திஸ் ரெயின் டியூரிங் விண்டர் த விண்டர் ரெயின்ஸ் ஆர் ஹெல்ப்ஃபுல் இன் க்ரோவிங் வீட் வீட்டுக்கு கொஞ்சம் லைட்டாக மைல்டாக கொஞ்சம் மழை தேவை கொஞ்சம் தண்ணி தேவை அண்ட் தட் இஸ் ப்ரொவைடட் பை திஸ் வெஸ்டர்ன் டிஸ்டர்பன்சஸ் நெக்ஸ்ட் இஸ் கொஸ்டின் நம்பர் நைன்டி த்ரீ arranging plateaus so if you look into the map your marwar plateau is the western most then comes your malwa then comes your bandelkhand then your bagelkhand then comes your chota nagpur plateau adikinda boga raj mahal hills will be there yeah so this is also another favorite area of upsc which you should be thorough with plateaus la endam dadathula irukku theriyum not just rivers plateaus and hills are also important so now looking at this western most is illa marwar plateau so even if you don't know uh, marwar is kelly water being la where do they come from this region so after that comes malwa malwa ka bandel kand enga irukne by this time of preparation everyone should know <coughs> so marwar malwa bandel kand adukaprama dhan chota nagpur varum okay so your answer should be 1432 which is c answer for 93 is c and comes your last question question number 100 so consider the following regarding characteristics of indian coal so indian coal can be uh, divided into two uh, categories into two one is gondwana coal the other is tertiary coal 98% india la irukiradhu vandu it is gondwana coal அந்த ரெண்டு பர்சன்ட் ஒரு பர்சன்ட் ரெண்டு பர்சன்ட் இருக்கிறது தான் தட் இஸ் தேர்ஷரி கோல் ஸோ மெஜாரிட்டி ஆஃப் டோட்டல் கோல் ரிசர்வ்ஸ் ஆஃப் இந்தியா பிலாங் டு கோண்ட்வானா கோல் தட் இஸ் ட்ரூ கார்பன் கண்டென்ட் இஸ் வெரி ஹை இன் தேர்ஷரி கோல் ரீஜன்ஸ் ஆஃப் இந்தியா தேர்ஷரி கோல் இஸ் சம்வாட் லைக் லிக்னைட் கோல் அதில் கார்பன் கண்டென்ட் ரொம்ப அதிகமாக இருக்காது கார்பன் கண்டென்ட் கம்மியாக இருக்கும் அதர் ஸ்டஃப் லைக் மாய்ஸ்சர் அண்ட் சல்ஃபர் இல் பி ப்ரெசன்ட் இன் ஹை குவான்டிட்டி ஸோ வெரி ஹைனு கொடுத்துருந்தா ரிலேட்டிவ்லி compared with uh, anthracite bituminous idu kodala compare panna this one becomes wrong so your answer should be one only a for question 100 your answer is a <coughs> okay so that's it for geography thank you so welcome to today's discussion so we will go one by one the question is the first question that is which of the following are the unesco world heritage sites located at delhi the question is regarding unesco world heritage site at delhi jantar mantar qutub minar red fort humayun tomb jama masjid id ellame delhi la irukku but jantar mantar delhi la irukku jaipur la irukku ஜெய்பூர்ல இருக்கக்கூடிய ஜந்தர் மந்தர் இஸ் அனஸ்கோ வேர்ல்ட் ஹெரிடேஜ் சைட் பட் டெல்லியில் இருக்கக்கூடிய ஜந்தர் மந்தர் வாஸ் நாட் அ யுனஸ்கோ வேர்ல்ட் ஹெரிடேஜ் சைட் ஆன்சர் புரியுதா உங்களுக்கு ஜந்தர் மந்தர்னா என்ன இட்ஸ் அப்சர்வேட்டரி யூனிட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜிக்கல் அப்சர்வேட்டரி யூனிட் கோளரங்கம் குசே கொஷினே அப்படின்னா எப்பயுமே இந்த மாதிரி ஆர்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் கல்ச்சர் ஏரியாவில் வந்தீங்கன்னு வச்சுக்கோங்களேன் Who made it? The question is like this. Who made it? What is the engineering material? This is the maximum question. Who made it? And what is the engineering material? How do you get it? Marble or sandstone or red sandstone or grey sandstone. How do you get it? The engineering material is ready. So, this is the Raja Savai Jai Singh. This is the period of the 18th century. Raja Savai Jai Singh. This is the period of the 18th century. Okay? ஸோ இந்த ஜெய்ப்பூர்லேயும் சரி அண்ட் டெல்லிலேயும் அவர் தான் கட்டுறார் பட் நம்மளுடைய கொஷின் டெல்லி அப்படின்றதால இது வராது ஆப்ஷன் வராது ஸோ கோ ஃபார் எலிமினேஷன் ஒன்று எங்கெங்கெல்லாம் இருக்கோ அங்கே தூக்கிடுங்க ஓகே ஒன்று எங்கெங்கெல்லாம் இருக்கோ தூக்கிங்கனால ஆன்சர் அங்கே வந்துடுது டூ த்ரீ ஃபோர் வந்துடுது சிம்பிள் எலிமினேஷன் தான் குதுப் மினார் யூனோ வாட் இஸ் த ஹிஸ்ட்ரி ஆஃப் குதுப் மினார் குதுப் மினார் எப்போ வந்தது சொல்லுங்க பார்க்கலாம் யாருடைய பீரியட்ல தேர்ட்டீன்த் சென்ச்சுரியுடைய 
தேர்ட்டீன்த் சென்ச்சுரியில் குதுப்புதி நைபக் டைம் பீரியடில் குதுப்பினார் வாஸ் ஸ்டார்டட் த கன்ஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன் இட் வாஸ் கம்ப்ளீட்டட் பை இல்துமிஷ் ஸோ குதுப்பினார் அப்படின்னாலே ரெண்டு கேரக்டர்ஸ் வராங்க மூணு கேரக்டர்ஸ் வருவாங்க ஒருத்தது ஒருத்தர் யார் அப்படின்னா குத்துப்புதி நைபக் குத்துப்புதின் ஐபக் செகண்ட் யார் அப்படின்னா இல்துமிஷ் பிகாஸ் குத்துப்புதி நைபக் ஹி ஸ்டார்டட் இல்துமிஷ் கம்ப்ளீட்டட் இல்துமிஷ் அண்ட் நெக்ஸ்ட் யார்னா இதே குதுப் காம்ப்ளெக்ஸ் குதுப்பினார் காம்ப்ளெக்ஸில் ஒரு அவுட்டர் வராண்டா கட்டினது யாருன்னா அலாவுதீன் கல்ச்சி அலை தர்வாசான்னு பேர் அது அலை தர்வாசா அலாவுதீன் கல்ச்சி ஓகே அண்ட் இதே குதுப்பினாரில் வென் இட் வாஸ் ஸ்ட்ரக்ட் பை லைட்டினிங் இட் வாஸ் ரிப்பேர்டு பை ஃபெரோஷா துக்லக் ஃபெரோஷா துக்லக் ஃபெரோஷா துக்லக் இதுதான் குதுப்பினார் அண்ட் இதில் இன்னொரு பியூட்டி என்னென்னா இந்த குதுப் காம்ப்ளெக்ஸ் அப்படின்றது இட்ஸ் அ பர்ஃபெக்ட் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஆஃப் இந்தோ இரானியன் ஸ்டைல் விச் மீன்ஸ் இரானியன் ஸ்டைல் வாஸ் தேர் ஆக்சுவலி இந்தோ இஸ்லாமிக் ஆர்கிடெக்சரில் இரானியன் ஸ்டைலில் இந்த குதுப் மினார் இருக்கும் உங்ககிட்ட கேட்பாங்க மினார்னா என்னன்னு கேட்பாங்க வாட் இஸ் மினார் இப்போ ஜந்தர் மந்தர்னா அப்சர்வேட்ரின்னு தெரியுது வாட் இஸ் மினார் ஆக்சுவலி மினார் எஸ்பெஷலி யூஸ்டு ஃபார் ப்ரேயர் பர்பஸஸ் மினாரா எப்படி இருக்கும் இப்படி இருக்குமா நிறைய நீங்கள் இப்போ தர்காவில் கூட பார்க்கலாம் அந்த காலத்தில் இந்த மாதிரி மினார் மேலே ஏறி நின்று நமாஸ் பண்ணுவாங்க குரு மேலே வந்து ஏறிடுவார் அங்கேருந்து நமாஸ் படி நமாஸ் பண்ணுவார் நமாஸ்னால் ப்ரேயர் பண்ணுவார் சுற்றி இருக்கிறவங்க என்ன பண்ணுவாங்கன்னா அதை கேட்பாங்க ஏன்னா ஹையர் ஏரியாவில் நீங்கள் நமாஸ் படிக்கும்போது சுற்றி இருக்கிறவங்களும் கேட்கும் இன்றைக்கி ஆம்பிளிஃபையரை வச்சு விட்டுறாங்க அது வேறு விஷயம் ஸோ திஸ் மினாரா இஸ் ஃபார் ஸ்பிரிச்சுவல் பர்பஸஸ் இட்ஸ் ஃபார் டூயிங் நமாஸ் இது யாருடைய ஞாபகத்துக்காக கட்டப்பட்டதுன்னு கேட்பாங்க ஒருத்தர் இருக்காரு பக்தியார் காக்கியோடைய ஞாபகத்துக்காக கட்டினார் பக்தியார் காக்கி வாஸ் அ சூஃபி சைண்ட் பக்தியார் கல்ஜி வாஸ் அ ஜென்ரல் ஸோ அந்த ஒரு கன்ஃபியூஷன் உங்களுக்கு இருக்கக்கூடாது ஓகே ஸோ குதுப்பினார் ரெட் ஃபோர்ட் ஓகே ரெட் ஃபோர்ட் அப்படின்றது இட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ கால்ட் அஸ் லால் குலா அதை நான் மென்ஷன் பண்ணியிருப்பேங்க எக்ஸ்பிளனேஷன்ஸில் கொடுத்துருப்பேன் ஓகே ரெட் ஃபோர்ட் பில்ட் டூரிங் த பீரியட் ஆஃப் ஷாஜஹான் ஷாஜஹான் வாஸ் கால்டு இன்ஜினியர் கிங் அவர் பிரின்ஸ் ஆஃப் பில்டிங் அவருடைய பீரியடில் வினோ ஷாஜஹான் பீரியட் வாஸ் த கோல்டன் ஏஜ் ஆஃப் முகல்ஸ் மெனி இன்ஜினியரிங் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் மெனி இன்ஜினியரிங் மார்பல்ஸ் வேர் ஆல் பில்ட் ஸோ ரெட் ஃபோர்ட் ஓல்டு டெல்லி ஓகேவா ரெட் ஃபோர்ட் ரிமம்பர்டு ஃபார் வாட் அப்படின்னா இட்ஸ் இன் ஓல்டு டெல்லி அண்ட் நம்மளுடைய ஐஎன்ஏ ட்ரையல்ஸ் இருக்குல்ல டூரிங் நைன்டீன் ஃபோர்ட்டி ஃபைவ் வென் த ஐஎன்ஏ வாஸ் அவுட் செவன்டீன் தௌசண்ட் சோல்ஜர்ஸ் வேர் ஆல் கேப்ட் இன் ஓல்டு டெல்லி தட் இஸ் வாட் வி கால் இட் இஸ் ரெட் ஃபோர்ட் so built by red sandstone sengote okay next humayun tomb this humayun tomb was built by it was built after the death of humayun okay humayun tomb is the blueprint of taj mahal it's a unesco world heritage site 1980s le unesco world heritage site kudutanga kaaranam enna na because of perfect ah pathina the chabar style roof what is chabar char bag means four parts will be there that is a perfect indo islamic architectural style so the ellame pathina ungalku jama masjid was in delhi but it was not unesco world heritage site okay so answer is 2 3 and 4 okay next so explanation aprama kodutha paathukonga and uh, the next question is question number idala uh, rombo current affairs based you see Nachna Kuttara, it was not in West Bengal. This fourth question is what? Wait. So the answer is uh, Lakudiyar. Lakudiyar was the answer. 
It is located on the Almora district of Uttarakhand. Which of the following is a group of prehistoric rock painting located in the cave shelter near the river Shuel? You don't hide here. For prehistoric rock painting sites, we see Adamgar, Yedakal, Lakudiyar and also Bimbatka. Adamgar, Madhya Pradesh. Bimbatka, Madhya Pradesh. But in river Suyal, check it So, river Suyal, either you should know where is river Suyal. Okay, or you should exactly know what, where where is the important where is this Lakudiyar. This one you the NCRT book Lakudiyar and also this Yadakkal and all mentioned. So answer is uh, Lakudiyar, Almora district of Uttarakhand. Mena pa? Ah, Yadakkal Tamil Nadu. Okay, fine. Next is uh, here they have asked. Okay, Nachna Kutara. It was in it was not in West Bengal. It was not in West Bengal. Okay, Baleshwar Temple was not in Uttar Pradesh. It was in Uttarakhand. And another one was in Nachna Kutara. You know the explanation. You know the exact current affairs. Questions. Okay, so Gajravo, Gajravo Temple. It was in Madhya Pradesh. The Gajravo Temple is remembered for what? Gajravo Temple is remembered for Mithuns. Mithuns are you know, a couple of erotic images on the fans. Mithuns are being sold. Mithuns. Mithuns are couples of erotic images and the famous. Couples of erotic images are very auspicious in the temple and the sculpture. Mithuns are being paid. Okay, couples of erotic images. So, you can see in the Gajravo temple. Two temples are in Madhya Pradesh. Gajravo is in Kantaria Mahadeva temple. If you look at the two, the Mithun's sculptures are also famous. So, this is correct. Govinda Devji Temple is in Rajasthan. Maybe you can't put it in Kaili. But Govinda Devji is in Kaili. Maybe you can associate Rajasthan. Remembered for so many Krishna worship. Bhagavati is famous. Rajasthan is in Kaili. Shaivism is in Kaili. Bhagavati is famous. So, you can correlate. Others and all, you know, it's Terenjir. So, in the questions, we have to ask. Maximum two pairs like it and attend panam or good safety. Hmm, attend panna dinge, jacker there, been to the gagada in the maripushans like it. Kutro, you are risked getting it. Okay, and the next one is. Putin, the nord. Next is in, in the context of the religious history of. India, the term Avadhanam Abdina consider Buddha, he was an enlightened soul. Our mother or a disciples now country can over a day over it. If a Nana Buddha, Ninga, not a disciple, Ungolode a poor which am Kadekala now look soldier. Ning a poor which and Matali, a pretty running and now get soldier. Ning Panda Nala the Catalan and Wotana soldier. Ada Avadhanam. Hmm, this is Buddhism philosophy. This is the most important Buddha is the philosophy. So, this is the most important thing. Avadana. So, that is what they have mentioned. Avadana. Okay. So, let's see. Avadana. Buddha's explanation of events by a person's worthy deeds. Worthy deeds is the most important thing. We are talking about good deeds and bad deeds. We are talking about good deeds and bad deeds. We are talking about worthy deeds. We are talking about what we are talking about. So that is what we call it as Avadana. Okay? Fine. This is what you know. The yogic postures mentioned by Padanchali. It is called Avadana. It is called Avadana. It is called Avadana. It is called Yoha. It is called Yoha. It is called Yoha. It is called Yoha. नहीं ना मैंने कि सोच रहा हूँ यो हाले ना रिया पोस्चर सुरु कुन सोच रहा हूँ आसन आसन सुरु यू शुड नॉट कंफ्यूज आसन आसन विथ आवदाना आवदाना अंडर द वैरा आसन अंडर द वैरा ओके सो ये दो रु मुख्य मानो एक विषय एंड नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इस क्वेश्चन नंबर द टर्म देरेसार इधर नहीं गया एनसीआरटी � Jains are worshipping Basadis and also Deresar. So, that's the explanation. Jain temple 
Deresar or Basadi is the place of worship for Jains. The followers okay, of Jainism, Jain architecture is essentially restricted to the temples and the monasteries. And Jain buildings generally reflect the prevailing style of the place and time they built. So, Basadi is Jain worshipping place. Bharats Bharat Abdina Vera Basadi Sabdin to the Vera in Basadi Sam Ketrakan. Who among the following leader wrote? Okay, wrote. Yeah, wrote. The one who was in a spelling mistake. Okay, Bandi Jeevan Abdin Pira Bandi. So I had in a Sachendra Sanya. Okay, who wrote this Bandi Jeevan? Satin Sat that is. Satyendra Nath Sanyala, we are simple and Satyendra Nath, we are Satyin Sanyala. Satyin Sanyala. Satyin Sanyala, you are Satyin Sanyala, you are HR, you are the Hindustan Republican Army. Satyin Sanyala remembered for what? In the Kakori train conspiracy case, you are one of the important to follow. Kakori train conspiracy case, you know. Okay, in the year of 1925, Uttar Pradesh, from Kakori to Lucknow, some of the 17 revolutionary terrorists from India, they involved in the decoity of Railway Fund of British. That's why they were in the same place. That's why they were in the same place. That's why they were in the same place. They were in the same place. That's why one of the leaders were in the same place. So, they were one of the founding members. That's why they were in the same place. 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 Okay, so this is one question. And uh, next question is consider the following statement Lok Sevak Sang was an idea put forth by Mahatma Gandhi to promote okay to promote what to promote rural development by serving the rural poor. Okay. Mahatma Gandhi emphasis that the Indian National Congress should be dissolved and serve the people as its main goal. Simple Gandhi and Solar. Indian National Congress was founded not to get independence but on its journey because of the so many reasons we have attained independence. So the purpose of the Congress was over according to Gandhi. So another dissolved one it is. Okay, Congress is not the political simple as well as the RCL Congress was not the Gandhi. तेरे लाल सिंह लाने इलेक्शन का परमा कांग्रेस है ना 1952 में इंडिया वाला फर्स्ट इलेक्शन सो आधे कुमुनारी कांग्रेस वैंडा तेरे दर ऐसे लाल वैंडा ना कांग्रेस कच्चे रखते हों तेरे दर ऐसे लाल वैंडा सिंपल आसला पना कांग्रेस कच्चे वंदु पाकम बोले ये डिटेट कांग्रेस है तेरे दर ऐसे लाल इनवाल and next is the Lok Sevak Sangha and the Lok Na Makkal. Makkal Sevai Sangha Ma Congress Amathana Gandhi Sonar. Next is which of the following which of the following are famous temples dedicated to Lord Shiva. Fairly Erku Parangai. Chenna Kesava. Kesava Anna Yaru. Obviously Krishna is the case. That's not the case. That's not the case. Hoysal Ishwara and Hoysal Hoysal Ishwara. That's the name of the name of the name. Hoysal Ishwara. Hoysal is the time period. That's the name of the name. Hoysal Ishwara. Mahakal Ishwara. The name of the name is Kal Ishwara. Ishwara Ishwara is the temple. You can fix it. This is the case. The answer is 2 and 3. This is the case. Okay. That's why you Mahakaleshwa Temple, one of the 12 Jyotirlinga Temples. Okay. Mahakaleshwa Temple is in Maharashtra. Hmm? Actually, Karnataka is Jyotirlinga Temples. Okay. Fine. Next is question number. Adi Shankaravapati Kudgaranga. Adi Shankara was responsible for reviving Hinduism in India to a greater extent when Buddhism was gaining popularity. 
he propounded the advaita philosophy very good and nirguna brahman okay adhu enna pusa irukku la nenikadinga namakku advaita nu or concept theriyudhu which one of the following statement correctly represents the teaching of adi shankaracharya the best means of salvation was devotion kadavula adaivadharku bhakti seluthu abindrara kadaya if you want to reach god you need to have a knowledge about the god idha advaitham kadavula adaiyadharku bhakti evada arivu thevan arivu ஆன்சர் புரியுது உங்களுக்கு பக்தி இட்ஸ் இஸ் கான்செப்ட் வாஸ் நாட் பக்தி மார்க்கா இட்ஸ் கான்செப்ட் வாஸ் கால்ட் ஞான மார்க்கா புரியுதா போ வேதாஸ் ஆர் எட்டர்னல் செல்ஃப் எக்ஸிஸ்டன்ட் அண்ட் ஹோலி அத்தாரிட்டேட்டிவ் இப்படிலாம் அவர் சொல்லவே இல்லை ஓகேவா தேர்ட் ஒன்னஸ் ஆஃப் த பர்சனல் செல்ஃப் வித் த சுப்ரீம் காட் இறைவன் ஒருத்தர் இருக்கான் இறைவனை நாம் அடையணும் அது சொன்னாரா ஆமாம் சொன்னார் ஆனால் இறைவன் அடைவதற்கு என்ன வேணும் நாலேஜ் வேணும்னா இவருடைய கான்செப்டே ஞான மார்க்கம்னு பேர் ஞான மார்க் the concept of bhakti marg was propounded by ramanujam was but not by shankaracharya okay idha oneness of the personal self with the supreme god idu or question adutha question eduthukittinga naala irukku nenikiren illaya mudumakkal thaali endral enna mudumakkal thaali nanana therdan burial urns தமிழ்நாட்டில் நியூஸ் பேப்பரில் அதிகமாக வந்திருக்கு இந்த வருஷம் ஓகே அதுவும் ஆர்கியாலஜியில் நிறைய வந்திருக்கு டேக் மயிலாடும் பாறை கீழன மண்டி ரீசெண்டாக வந்து தமிழ்நாடு கவர்மெண்ட் இஸ் கிவிங் அ புஷ் ஃபார் நோ ஆர்கியாலஜிக்கல் டெவலப்மெண்ட்ஸ் அதனால் அந்த மாதிரி அதெல்லாம் எங்கே ஏன் வாட் இஸ் தேர் இந்த பரியல் ஒன்ஸ் இந்த முதுமக்கள் தாயில் என்ன இருக்குன்னா அந்த காலத்தில் அப்போ வாழ்ந்த மக்களுடைய மெட்டீரியல் ரிமைன்ஸை வச்சு அவங்க எந்த மாதிரியான மெட்டீரியல் கல்ச்சரில் வாழ்ந்துருக்காங்கன்னு தெரிஞ்சுக்கலாம் நான் ஏற்கனவே சொல்லியிருக்கேன் இந்தியாவில் பாட்ரி அப்படின்றத வச்சு அது எந்த டைம் பீரியடில் எந்த மாதிரியான லைஃப் ஸ்டைலில் வாழ்ந்துருக்காங்கன்னு தெரிஞ்சுக்கலாம் அதனால தான் நீங்கள் படிக்கும் பொழுது ப்ரீ ஹிஸ்ட்ரி பீரியடில் யூ ஸ்டடி அபவுட் பிளெயின் பாட்ரி இந்த வேலி யூ ஸ்டடி அபவுட் பிளெயின் பாட்ரி பட் பாலிக்ரோம் பாட்ரி வாஸ் தே ஆரியன்ஸ் பீரியட் வி ஸ்டடி அபவுட் பெயிண்டட் கிரேவேர் ஃபேஸ் விச் மீன்ஸ் the paint is there gray color and after aryans you study about northern black polished wear idella enna na pottery odi names idha vache avanga eppadi vaalndirukanga endru therinjikudhu namak you take arikamedu tamil nadu where you can see the roman utensils appo rome kuda trade pandranga theriyudhu some pottery or plain pottery then we can come to a conclusion that yeah this this pottery and all used to be common people but the same area where some painted polychrome pottery were all there designs vary are appo makkalude creativity and mak adhe pottery where enga edathila kadachirukendradhu vecha avangalude material culture pathi namakku theriyudhu so adhu mari tamil nadu la this burial urns mudumakkal thaali gives you a clever 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 idha mudumakkal thaali okay and to say the truth in those days idha vida perusa irukum urai nu solluvanga after the death the people will be put in there aama adhe da irandavangala idu ullara potu moodi vechiruvanga adukku periya vandu paakum bodhu pot burial nu peru aduvum vandu namakku avanga enna eppadi irandanga nradha dhaan theriyudhu avanga போட்டு மூடி வைக்கும் பொழுது புதைக்கும் பொழுது அவங்க யூஸ் பண்ண டூல்ஸையும் போட்டு போச்சிடுறாங்க ஸோ தட் இட் செல் ஷோஸ் வாட் இஸ் தர் மெட்டீரியல் கல்ச்சர் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் வாட் ஸோ இது எங்கே சார் கண்டுபிடிச்சிருப்பாங்கன்னா ஆல்ரெடி மெனி பிளேசஸ் இஸ் தேர் ஆதிச்சநல்லூர் அவர் பல்லவபுரம் அரிக்கமேடு தமிழ்நாட்டில் வந்து மயிலாடும் பாரி ரீசெண்ட்லி கிருஷ்ணகிரி டிஸ்ட்ரிக்ட் கிருஷ்ணகிரி டிஸ்ட்ரிக்ட் ரீசெண்ட்லி நியூஸ் பிகாஸ் மெனி பீப்புள் திங்க் தட் இன் நார்த் ஓன்லி த அயன் டூல்ஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் யூஸ்ட் the recent excavation at mailadumbare krishnagiri conveys that iron was first used in south okay so that is the example okay fine next who among the following okay who among the following started the native improvement society listen 
கோபாலகிருஷ்ண கோகலே ரிமம்பர்டு ஃபார் சர்வன்ஸ் ஆஃப் இந்தியா சொசைட்டி அனதர் ஃபெலோ ஸ்டார்டட் சர்வன்ஸ் ஆஃப் பீப்புள்ஸ் சொசைட்டி இஸ் லாலா லஜ்பத் ராய் இவங்கெல்லாம் சொசைட்டியோட அசோசியேட் ஆகிருப்பாங்க லைக் வைஸ் மாடர்ன் இந்தியா தே ஆர் ஆஸ்கிங் அபவுட் இன்ஸ்டியூஷன்ஸ் ஸோ பாலசாஸ்திரி ஜம்பேத்கர் வாஸ் அ நைன்டீன்த் சென்சுரி சோஷியோ ரிலீஜியஸ் ரிஃபார்மர் ஃப்ரம் மகாராஷ்டிரா he started native improvement society he was a socio religious reformer in the 19th century native improvement society na aramichar okay va so bala shastri jambekar this gopal hari deshmukh is there no he was the first person who used to kadi before gandhi gandhi ki munadiye kadiye adhigama insist pannad yaar na this okay kadi was insisted by gopal hari deshmukh okay dada bhai nawarji we know about him he was the grand old man of india and a, a, a parsi reformer okay so adanal adala therinju vechukonga and uh, next question is question number yes h n kunzru adha hridayanath kunzru h n kunzru was a member of servants of india society is yes. founded seva samiti at allahabad in 1914 what they are asking gopala krishna gokhale odia servants of india society le oru member ama allahabad la seva samiti n aarambichara ama rendu me unna oru oru person patti rendu facts irukke yes what then what he did then He is also remembered. He also served as the member of the State Reorganization Commission. You can learn quality. Okay, so State Reorganization Commission, 1953 of the Independence India. So both were all correct. Next. The Indian philosophical context, Vashudevaga Kudumpukam. This term was mentioned in our parliament. is drawn from which of the following sources okay maha upanishads muntaka upanishads speaks about satyam eva jayate there are 182 upanishads okay this term was not in rigveda or kurma purana appala onnum kedaiyadu onnu upanishads la da irukum adala maha upanishads appindradala vasudevaka kudumbakam the world is one family na artham next the title of raya gaja keshari and daya gaja keshari was conferred with the gajapati rulers of odisha wrong kakatiya dynasty kakatiya dynasty rulers use this title okay gaja raya keshari and the raya gajendra keshari was mentioned in bidar inscription so answer is what answer is what it was two only right yes answer on the two only there answer is two only next come to this question dadni system refers to dadni system refers to the advance payment system to engage local merchants to procure goods from the market this particular dadni system was so famous in bengal id enga bengal la famous aagudana bengal east india company period la id famous east india company officers in initial time period they won't directly engage with indian farmers or indian merchants they will have some agents the agents are indians to procure goods from the agents they will give some advance money to the agents consider i am british i won't engage with a british merchant i will appoint you as my agent and i will give you the advance money ungitta panatha kuduthu ena pannuven appadina porutkala vaanga vappa so this system was called dadini system it was introduced by mughals in india yes but this system was so famous it was used by okay yaar use panna sorry this system was introduced in mughals and irukla adu kedaiyadu this system was introduced by british actually okay first only correct british only used this system okay fine you see 
it was a english east india company who made popular the system okay dadini system next next question question number who among the following established hindu dharma sabha hindu dharma sabha was introduced by radha kanta dev yaar sir your when rajaram mohan rai started atmiya sabha brahma sabha and brahma samaj to counter rajaram mohan rai he started hindu dharma sabha this hindu dharma sabha was a orthodox section actually apana enna artham it was not a reform it was a orthodox section orthodox section enna artham ivanga epime reformers ku counter a irupanga konsa purida they support for the orthodox events okay fine and the next question is question number uh, here they have mentioned you see the dharma sabha campaigned against the hindu widow remarriage act of 1856 and submitted a petition against the proposal with nearly four times more signatures than the one submitted for it by ishwar chandra vidyasagar ishwar chandra vidyasagar widow remarriage act venunu or petition kudukkararu british kitta adukku counter ah naal madangu petition podranga ivanga yaar this hindu dharma sabha idhilarnde ivungalukku therinjikala they were they were the one not ready for any reforms dalhousie personally finalized the bill despite the opposition and it being considered as a flagrant breach of hindu customs as prevalent then and it was passed by lord canning okay wow. so this is so lord dalhousie no actually so this is what we call it as uh, the widow remarriage act of 1856 okay fine dalhousie eduthittu vandha pinnadi pass panna the lord canning okay fine enna pa வீட்டுல தெரியாதோ ஓகே இத கொடுத்துருவோம் என்னப்பா இது ஓகே இது ஓகேல நெக்ஸ்ட் அரேஞ்ச் தி ஃபாலோயிங் மொனார்ச் ஆஸ் பர் த குரோனாலஜிக்கல் ஆர்டர் இதெல்லாம் ரொம்ப சிம்பிள் மிஹிர் போஜா அப்படின்றவர் குஜ்ஜார பிரதிகரா இதெல்லாம் வந்து ஏர் வச்சுலாம் நீங்கள் பார்த்தா ஒன்றும் வேலைக்கு ஆகாது கோ ஃபார் சிம்பிள் டெக்னிக் பாருங்க மிஹிர் போஜா பிரதாப் ருத்ரதேவா ராஜேந்திர சோழன் கோவிந்தா சரி சோழர்கள் அப்படின்றவங்க லேட்டர் மெடிவலில் தான் வராங்க ஓகே அதாவது ஏர்லி மெடிவலில் வராங்க பிரதாப் ருத்ரதேவா இது சோழாவுக்கும் அப்புறமா வராங்க முக்கியமாக அலா அலாவுதீன் கழிச்சு இருக்காருல்ல அவருடைய ஜென்ரலான மாலிக் கஃபூர் கூட ஃபைட் பண்ணுவார் இந்த பிரதாப் ருத்ரதேவா அப்போ இவர் தான் லாஸ்ட்ல வரணும் அப்போ டூ தான் லாஸ்ட்ல வரணும்னு நீங்கள் கேல்குலேட் பண்ணுங்க ஒரு ரஃபாகவே மற்ற எதுவுமே தெரியலனா டூ தான் லாஸ்ட்ல வரணும்னு பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஆன்சர் என்ன இருக்கு இதுதான் இருக்கு மற்றதெல்லாம் தெரியணும்னு எனக்கு அவசியமே கிடையாது ஸோ கோ ஃபார் தட் டெக்னிக் அண்ட் நெக்ஸ்ட் டெக்னிக் இஸ் அண்ட் த நெக்ஸ்ட் ஒன் இஸ் உங்களுக்கு எக்ஸ்பிளனேஷன்ல கொடுத்துருக்கேன் தெளிவாக அதனால பார்த்துக்கோங்க ஓகே மகாவீர சரித்ரா வாஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் இந்த பாருங்கள் மகாவீர சரித்ரா வாஸ் அன் இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் சான்ஸ்கிரிட் ஒர்க் ஆன் த லைஃப் அண்ட் டீச்சிங்ஸ் ஆஃப் லார்ட் மகாவீரா கிடையாது மகாவீர சரித்திரம் அப்படின்றது லார்ட் ராமாவை பற்றி அவர் மகாவீரர் அந்த மாதிரி மீனிங் அதில் இட் வாஸ் ரிட்டன் பை பாவ புத்தி இந்த மாதிரி கொஷின்ஸ் கேட்குறாங்க ஸோ ஆமாம் கரெக்டாக இருக்கும்ல அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டுலாம் எழுதிடக்கூடாது மகாவீராவுடைய ஹிஸ்ட்ரியை இது வரைக்குமே எழுதுனது யார் அப்படின்னா தெர் வாஸ் அ ஹேமச்சந்திரான்னு ஒருத்தர் இருக்கார் பரிசிஷ்ட பர்வன் அப்படின்னு ஒரு புக்கில் தான் மகாவீர் அவரை பற்றிலாம் எழுதப்பட்டிருக்கு சாணக்கியாவை பற்றி மகாவீரை பற்றி ஸோ இட் வாஸ் பாவபுத்தி ரோட் அபவுட் லார்ட் ராம் அண்ட் த லாஸ்ட் ஒன் இஸ் ஓகே நெக்ஸ்ட் இஸ் ஓகே த டேர்ம் நிஷ்கானாலே ஒன்றும் இல்லை காயின்ஸ் நிஷ்கான்ற டேர்ம் ஆரியன்ஸ் பீரியடில் வந்திருக்கு மௌரியன்ஸ் பீரியடில் வந்திருக்கு நிஷ்கா அப்படின்னாலே காயின்ஸ் எஸ்பெஷலி கோல்டு காயின்ஸை குறிக்கும் ஓகே நிஷ்கா கிருஷ்ணா அப்படின்றது தான் காயின்ஸை குறிக்கு சரிங்களா ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் ஆல் அபவுட் என்னப்பா எல்லாம் முடிச்சாச்சு ம் ஓகே பாய்